First of all, I would like to thank organizer for inviting me for this. For this meeting. Of course, I know Boris for a very long time, but I never work in solid state physics. And I think my talk will be the only one where it will be no experiments and even no proposal for experiments. But of course, with cold atom, one can do everything you want. So in principle, it's possible <laughs> to imitate some models which I will discuss. So what I like to discuss and what was asked my purpose to discuss some toy models of unusual spectral statistics. Toy models means that they are accessible to analytical cal calculations, but they are quite strange and you will see that they are often very unusual behavior. So what I would like to discuss is the following. I will start with some kind of introduction uh, just some historical introduction. Then I will start with some dynamical system which do have strange spectral statistics. It's called pseudo-integrable model, pseudo-integrable billiards. These models are sufficiently complicated that I can able to compute only a few characteristics of them. But uh, there are some more simple toy models which are, have some kind of relation with uh, this pseudo-integrable model, where I can do much more and have all spectral function analytical. And uh, this model, which I pseudo-integrable map, it appears quite isolated, but I will show you that it's really a representative of one of the big class of integrable random matrices, which I call the random lux matrices. And then I will discuss some conclusion. So, uh, let's start with something very simple. Uh, you know uh, what is a spectral statistic. Spectral statistics means uh, statistics which I have in mind that imagine that you have n your favorite numbers, e1, e2, en plus 1. It may be a uh, telephone of your friends or imaginary part of, of zeta function of Riemann or something else as energy spectrum of your favorite system. And then you do, first of all, unfolding. So you do something very simple. You just put n divided by E n plus 1 minus E n E g. So you do to remove some scale factor, and then you compute the difference nearest neighbor distribution. You compute E e plus 1 minus E. And, and, and of, of course, they are ordinate set. And then you compute probability or histogram P of S, dS. It will be how many times this quantity S e is between S plus ds and s is divided by n. In, in such a way, you obtain what is called nearest neighbor distribution. And it has just mathematical curiosity. But if you do it for dynamical system, then you will see something strange appear. Imagine that you have billiard model. So you have Laplace plus zero on the boundary. And if you do a lot of spectrum of, of this billiard, you will see that nearest neighbor distribution has a very specific form. It's E minus S. It has no label repulsion. The value of P of S of Z0 means that two energy labels did not fill each other. But it has exponential tail for large S. It, if it will be a really random numbers, you easily see it just uh, exercise with Bernoulli process that it will be E pi O S. But for this system to prove that it's P of S, still it's open problem, one can compute only two-point correlation function, which is more simple. But everybody believes that for integrable system, generic integrable system, spectral statistics, per statistics of energy level will be Poissonian statistics. On the other hand, if your billiard is chaotic, for example, 
that shape of the stadium and you do the same story, you will see that you get something else. You will get function which is zero at the origin. It has exponential squared S squared tail. It is Wigner surmise the exact uh, function. Exact means that if you use random standard random matrix, you can compute it through solution of Penleve equations, but uh, it's completely a different behavior. My talk is about what about dynamical system, which are neither Poissonian, neither uh, chaotic. The first uh, idea coming uh, from numerics, from quite old stuff, it was about three-dimensional Anderson model. So if you have Anderson model, you, you have disorder and you have jump, and disorder in some, uh, say, box disorder, then it's, you know very well that if disorder is very large, all states are localized. But if disorder is less than special value, then appear two, two different possibilities. In the center of the spectrum, states are delocalized, and uh, on the tail, they are localized. And there is a, some value which called the metal isolating transition, where something new appear. So if you do numerics for this model and you are taking energy level in, in this form, you, you should have Poisson statistics. It's practically evident because, the, no, it says should be randometric statistics because delocalized means that your function is everywhere and they have label repulsion. If you do spectral statistics for energy in, in this region, you should have Poisson statistics. But if you do statistics exactly on the metal isolated transition, of course you cannot do exactly, but you can cons consider some truc nearby and you do unfolding correctly. So what it will be? It's not a true numerics. True numerics is not very, very convincing, but if you do, for example, W equal five in this center of the zone, you should have random matrix prediction. And if you have uh, on the tails, W say 100, you should pass on. But if you do in the center of the spectrum exactly of the critical value, you should have something else. And the same uh, for other characteristic. So after that had been done, it's appear, it becomes clear that it's possible to have some new behavior. So this new behavior is characterized, first of all, by level repulsion at small distances. It's like for Poisson, for random matrix uh, story, but it's also exponential decrease of the tail, not, not as a for random matrix, but as a for, for Poisson. And as, as, as you know, Poisson in French means fish, so this statistics has a name, M, uh, Mermed. It's like this, you have a tail like for Poisson in, in very strange head for this uh, statistics. What appear is also non-trivial, but it's appear in all possible models, which I know, that uh, if you compute number variance, what it means? You, you count how many labels exist in the interval of uh, length L, and you normalize it, as I, as I do it before, that uh, mean value of labels corresponding to uh, N of L, mean value equal L. And then you compute variance of this one. It's uh, one more uh, exercise of Bernoulli process shows that it's just exactly proportional to L. Number variance, it's called number variance. So you compute variance of the number of the given interval when you have some random realization or you move in the spectrum and you should get something linear in L. For random metrics, this quantity should be logarithmic of L and so uh, these coefficients called spectral compressibility, and uh, so it's one for Poisson and zero for random matrix. For all non-trivial Mergman type statistics, you will see that key is some non-trivial number between zero and one. Another property of all this model which I will discuss, it's a, that wave function are multifractal. What it means, that if you compute psi square power to Q and you compute mean value, then it's scaled as a V is a volume size to the power Q minus one DQ. 
in the Q called fractal dimensions. It's easy to see that if you have localized state, you have only one elements of C large or other small, so DQ is equal zero. If you have random metrics, they are all of the same order, and due to normalization, they, each of them is one over N, so you do DQ equal one for random metrics. For all model which you will see, this quantity are non-trivial. So what is known and what is uh, well investigated? So once more, if you have, uh, what will be the random matrix model of, of, of this behavior? It's well known that if you have integrable models, they are like diagonal matrices. Each diagonal matrix independent variables and, and you get integrable model. If you have random matrices, all elements, roughly speaking, of the same order, each E is interacting with all other. So it was natural to consider matrices of the form E minus G power alpha. So when alpha is small, it means that you can ignore that it, it looks like a constant, so it should be close to a random matrix theory. If alpha is large, it should be close to Poisson. And this also was, have been proved by Levita, Felia, Schuller Levita, that when alpha equal one, you have a special type of statistics, the critical statistics. Standard model of critical statistics is what is called critical power low banded matrices. It's a random uh, Gaussian variables, independent variables, but the variance is not a constant, but decaying like E minus G power one, if it's square root of each, each element's the decaying. So when B equal infinity, it means that all of them are the same, you get random matrix. If B equal to zero, you get Poisson. What is known for, for this standard model? One can construct perturbation theory for both B equal much bigger than one and B much less than one. B equal, for the large B, you use heavily sigma model, and I don't know how to do it without sigma model, but for small b, you do perturbation theory, and you get easily some confirmation that uh, t is non-trivial, and fractal dimensions are non-trivial in the most limit. What is interesting symmetry relation, which has been derived, here proposed uh, by Mirlin and company, that if you compute, not dq, but if you compute this combination, then this combination is symmetric with respect to Q to one minus Q. So the main question which I start is, uh, are there dynamical models with intermediate statistics? I, you remember that if system is integrable, statistics is Poissonian, if it's chaotic, it's random matrix. But there are another type of models which Rayleigh mentioned. It's called pseudo-integrable models. Pseudo-integrable, simplest example of pseudo-integrable models is a plane billiard where all angles are rational of pi. So all angles of this polygon should be rational of pi in order that it will be a pseudo-integrable model. For example, you can have a rectangular billiard with a, some part in it, you, or you can have triangular billiard with angle pi over n. For all this system, it is proved the trajectory are living not in the, they are living on the higher genus surface. So the genus of the surface should be computed by this formula. So when all ME is one, it's the only case, genus is well, so it's integrable system. You know, say all integrable system trajectory are living on the torus, and, and torus is a surface of genus one. For chaotic system, all trajectory living or cover uniformly uh, high dimensional energy surface, and so there is no two dimensional surfaces in, in the game. For example, if you use triangle pi over four, pi over four, pi over two, or pi over six, pi over three, then it's right triangle, the genus one is integrable, but if you do pi over five or pi over eight or something else, you will see that they are not because the genus don't correspond to integral model. So, what is the classical dynamics of uh, this pseudo-integrable model? It's also uh, well established that it corresponds to what is called uh, 
integral exchange map. For example, uh, let me consider pi over a triangle. In in instead of continuation, you will consider reflection in the sides, and you will have a hexagon, and you should identify parallel uh, parts of this hexagon. So all classical mechanics of trajectory in pi over a triangle corresponds to this, and you see immediately that it's genus two surfaces because you have four independent contours for this. But if you look more carefully, you will see that you can uh, separate, split it in, in four ad, ad different parts, and all trajectories, say, from 0, 1 will go to 4, 5 region, from 1, 2 they go 5, 6, and so on. So classical map for these trajectories. You, have, you start here, you go here, you come here, you reflect it, you go here, you go here, reflect it, and so forth. It's called interval exchange map because you easily see that all information of trajectory are hidden in the uh, permut permutation of interval. You have 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4 interval, and you just permuted it in, in the special manner. It's all known that this system is neither integrable nor chaotic, and they have name pseudo-integrable system. And it's even classically, they are quite non-trivial because you see that cl here cl classical mechanics lead to the explicit discontinuity. So if you iterate for a long time, you should be sure in what part of the discontinuity you are. It is quite heavy talk, heavy there are methods which permit you to do much higher numerics than usual. But what is a about quantum mechanics. So up to now, I, I take pi over n triangles, for example, pi over five triangles, and uh, somebody did calculation, and you see you have 10,000 labels, which you split in four uh, equal parts, and if low energy part, here you have three curves. This curve is a random matrix prediction, I, st I started, it's not P of S, integrated P of S. It's much more sensitive to the small details, and for numerics, it's much more useful and much more sensitive to use not P of S. P of S depends on the bin. N of S, it just count how many uh, S is, l is less than a fixed value. So it's, it's much more easy and much more stable to do N of S. So it's random matrix prediction, it's Poisson prediction, and in between is something which is called semi-Poisson, which I will discuss slightly later. It has label repulsion at small, and exponential tails in the large. And everything here you can compute correlation function analytically. And you see that with increasing of energy, it's quite nicely go to the prediction, to something else. What? You go to something else than it was before. And it, this is a, the same story, but for all triangles from uh, 5 to 30, and there's a difference between semi-Poisson, which is just a uh, mark, and uh, all uh, triangles, you see clearly this, it will be a random matrix prediction, and all triangles are quite far, is a depend of n. And here you have 20,000 labels, so it's quite a good statistics. So what, what can be done analytically? Analytically, one can compute only the compressibility. Compressibility, if you compute it carefully through periodic orbits of these triangles, you will have some explicit formula of, of like this. So the formula is very simple. Uh, it's, it, it is heavy mathematics is hidden in it because to compute periodic orbits is possible only for uh, what is called which triangle where you have a which group in it. If somebody interesting, I can discuss. But if the triangle is pseudo-integrable but not belong to, to this subgroup of all triangles, I don't know what to do because even the number of periodic orbits is, no, is not known explicitly. You, you, it's not only the, the bound, but it can oscillate it to all you things. It's just a consequence of very complicated character of classical mechanics for this simply looking system. 
you can do another system. And uh, if you do the computation, you, be, you will see that for this value 5, 8, 10, and 12, k of 0 is close to the value 1 half, which was predicted to Poisson. For, to predict it to semi Poisson, you can find small details, it's not important. And, and this is a correlation function, co correlation for a factor is numerically computed, and this value corresponds to this guy. Another model which you also can uh, belong to this same class, though mechanics is, is different, is Aronov bomb flux line. You can put flux line in the rectangular billiard, and you will see that spectral statistics becomes, from Poisson, becomes of intermediate tape. It has level repulsion, and it has exponential tail numerically, and you can also compute through periodic qubits calculation some value of, for a factor of zero, just to confirm an analytically strange character or intermediate character of, of this uh, model. You can do, of course, calculation for circular billiard, whatever you wish, and uh, I will not spend time for this. What is the difficulty of treating this model quantum mechanically? Look, if you have classical reflection of the half plane, for example, you have here the region, you have in, in this red point, you have two light, light coming and light reflected. In this region, you only one light, and here you have no classical light. So classical mechanics always for pseudo-integrable system is discontinuous. Quantum mechanics cannot have discontinuity, so it produces some complicated expression close to, to this line, which is called optical boundaries. And you also know that if you consider, say, a reflection of the wedge, of the electric wedge, then you have this formula, and you see that exactly on the, this direction, you don't see it, but it probably you can believe, exactly in the optical lines, it corresponds to uh, uh, some complete, uh, diffraction coefficient goes to infinity, which signifies that here the field is strongly perturbated, and no perturbation theory can be applied in this region. The same story for the flux line. Of course, coefficient, diffraction coefficient of the flux line is well known. It's one more classical mechanics is continuous, but it appears phase. If you go in, in this part of flux line, you, you get phase E pi alpha. For this line, you, you get phase E minus E pi alpha, and so on. You see discontinuous phase. Here there is a many interesting phenomena, which I don't have time to discuss because I see that I am too slow. In particular, one can prove uh, that reflection from many lines like this corresponds in, in the dominant approximation, the mirror reflection. If angle is small, if angle is small, not ex small angle, but really the parameter should be phi square root of kd much less than one. Phi is the angle, but uh, d is the distance from this, and if this criterion is fulfilled, the dominant effect of Gaussian reflection is reflection from the boundary. And you can easily c construct approximate wave function leaving for this, uh, for this model. For example, this wave function corresponds to the barrier billiard, which I showed you before. You have barrier billiard, and then you split it in two parts. If it's equal, so you have this type of billiard. The only a, a, a difference is that here you impose a Neumann condition, and here you impose Dirichlet, Dirichlet, Dirichlet condition. And all this pseudo-integrable model leads to approximate semi-classical quantization of periodic obvious channel. I, I don't have time to discuss, but just look for this particular nice example. is a 10,000 labels. Everything is normalized. The distance between two labels is one. And you clearly see a regular structure for very high excited states. And, and no such structure appear in, uh, 
uh, say, rectangular billiard. And you, I, I have infinite many pictures of this, but it's pictures. But it leads to some kind of semi-classical quantization, which you see here, approximate value is this, and uh, exact value is this. The same story is here. It's a long story of how to quantize surface of higher genus. And what I have in mind is that you can do semi-classical quantization of surface of higher genus, at least of certain surface of higher genus. But these are the pictures, but I like more have formulas. So if you have expand, expand this function in too high into some kind of uh, uh, basis function, so this is a y. So you have 0, 0 here, and here I put Neumann condition here and zero condition here. You expand, it's a full set of functions in this rectangular. You can expand and you can plot. Here you will have m, here you have n, and you see that uh, all coefficients for this particular function is small except one or a few of them which corresponds exactly to these propagating waves. Here, if you do look carefully, it's much less, it's a goes to zero, it's another line picture. So another line means plus minus, but amplitude here is approximately one and here is amplitude is very small. So it's like, we call it super scar because they survive, semi-classical limit goes to infinity. If you have numbers, you can compute participation ratio and you can compute participation ratio for this, uh, say, numerics, which has been quite old one. And uh, you know that participation ratio or higher moments should be scaled with n. Now n is k because you have two-dimensional surface uh, of conservation of energy, only the number of function proportional to k. And if you do computation uh, and you plot, say, the, the, this, way, this is from 1,000 levels to 800 levels, here, 4,400 is 10,000, 10,020. And then you compute, try to fit this curve. And you see that the fit with all this, it's old data. Nowadays, one can do, if you, if you wish, much more. You see that it fit like uh, for this, this point of the stadium billiard which is chaotic. And you see, for the stadium billiard, fit is a proportional to k, proportional to n, which means that d equal 1. But for barrier billiard, d 2 equal 1 half, approximately. And here you have all, all labels till for 5,000. And you have chaotic, uh, you can fit it, and you can conclude that everything for the pseudo-integrable models are fractal wave functions. OK, the model is model, but I like to more analytical results, so I will simplify it. And also, uh, in instead of consider pseudo-integrable model, I will consider quantum pseudo-integrable map. Quantum pseudo-integrable map, even the most simplest, which interchange two intervals. So uh, uh, this is the example of x plus x modulo 1. So you have lines, discontinuous, and other line, and so on. It's also a discontinued map. It's pseudo it's, it will be a pseudo-integrable map if you look for these sequences of map. It's an it's area-conserving map because you have dynamical system. And if alpha is rational, you have uh, interval exchange map. If alpha is irrational, you have only ergodic map, but uh, not pseudo-integrable. And you can compute quantum map. What is quantum map is unitary matrix whose saddle points equal classical maps. And it, it's not my invention. It was somebody else who do it for pure mathematical purposes. And uh, uh, so I use a slight generalization of, of this map in the momentum space. If you do Fourier transformation of, of this map, you get that you can approximate this map like this. It's, it, is, it is not approximation. It is exact, of course, Fourier transformation. Here you have a phase. In the dynamical model, it will be k squared. And here I put just random phases. And here you have unitary matrix. You can easily convince yourself that it's unitary, though it's not clearly seen. And uh, 
what I will consider in what follow two different cases, non-symmetric matrices, which is analog of GOE, and symmetric matrices, it means that uh, K and minus K are the same. If alpha is irrational, I told you that I don't know, it's not pseudo-integrable, it's just an ergodic map, and you see that spectral statistics numerically very well described by standard random matrix ensemble. Uh, this I cannot prove because I don't see how to, nobody knows how to prove that even for this simple matrix that all spectral characteristics do agree with standard ensemble. But uh, what I can prove is alpha is rational, say m over q, it's two comprime integer, and m n, n is dimension of matrix, equal plus minus one, then spectral statistics agree with semi-Poisson statistics with one parameter beta equal either q minus one, either q minus two for non-symmetric is symmetric. What is semi-Poisson? It is exact results. It's not, uh, it's not uh, numerics, it's just exact result, but I don't have time to discuss. What is semi-Poisson statistics? It's appeared many years ago when we try to consider the simple possible random type uh, uh, logarithmic gas approximation. So you have, in random matrices, you have all energy interacts with all energy. Here I put energy only nearby energies, which interacted with parameter beta. Then you do by by some formulas, and you, you, and you get that all characteristics can be computed. In particular, P of S equal S power beta, the same beta is here, and minus beta plus one S, exponential tail. K of two you can compute. You can compute compressibility one beta plus one. And the simplest case beta equal one, it's a semi-Poisson statistics, which I discussed you before. So look, so change alpha, I can change a level repulsion as I wish. If you example, if alpha one third, one six, one nine, and you see P of S is S squared, then you have S five, S eight, the same for symmetric matrices, it's shifted just to better. So you have S one half, S three half, and five half. This is the exact results compared with some numerics. I have to go, go more quicker. And if you do, for example, alpha 1 over 20 and n equal 8, 0, 1, you see the formula S19 power e minus 20. But if you change a little n, 8, 8, you see 8,009, you see that curve is uh, not far from random matrix result. It's not exactly random matrix results because I can compute explicit formula for all uh, modulus, for all modular k. Uh, there are some explicit formula more complicated, which is not important. Uh, it is important, but not immediately. And the co correlation function, for example, you see is as strange it is, it's exponential of exponential is something. It's very nicely fitted to numerics for, for this case, n equal 8,001. 801. If you compute numerically fractal dimensions, you see that they are fractal dimensions very nicely follow. It's for one third, one five by nine. But if you check this uh, relation, symmetry relation, you see that they are not fulfilled. There is no perturbation theory here. You have one of them is uh, one delta, another of them of another one, and they are not symmetric at all. And it's the same story for all alpha which we have investigation. So eigenfunction of this strange quantum map F <laughs> multifractal, but symmetry relation is not fulfilled. But as, as I told you, it's, it's, it's a very strange map because it's appear somewhere else and we just recuperate it and to show its spectral statistics. It, it, it is nice to see something more generic and more generic, consider, for example, this type of matrices. Random, random momenta, random Q. It's a diagonal matrix. You have E, so it's a uh, Hermitian matrix. And I will impose the measure. What will be the measure? The measure will be, say, trace L dagger L. It's natural. And if I do only this, I have this part. But the Q is not restricted because it's not here. And I will put here beta Q squared. 
is very natural method. But if you look a little and you remember that you see this matrix before, you will see that it's a lux matrix for Calogero Moser model. L dot equal L, exactly the same L. You, you, you have M special, which corresponds to as a consequence of this relation to Calogero Moser Hamiltonian, a rational Calogero Moser Hamiltonian. But I don't have any dynamics, but I do know who is the action in angle variables for Calogero model. For example, if you diagonalize this matrix, this is a phases, and, and this is a you can easily prove that this relation, and the, what is important that double M uh, is the angle variables, a lambda M, eigenvalue of lux matrices, are action variables. It's important to me that this transformation between P and Q to WL, a lambda, are canonical. It's very difficult, uh, tedious to prove even by two by two matrices that it is canonical transformation. You don't have any Vronsky. So the only information I will we'll use is that there are some canonical transformation to some new variables. So uh, what is a DL is, is this one. Then I choose trace of LL dagger is lambda m squared. Q squared is at Q dagger Q because it was eigenvalue of Q. It is equal to this one. So a random uh, dp dq is d lambda w, and you, you get this factor for uh, eigenvalue of lux matrices. And you see that w integral, you just throw it away, and you get joint distribution of eigenvalues uh, without only for eigenvalues of lux matrices. It is exact formula. It's not approximated. No approximation is done. So all classical random metrics are based that you have big uh, group of rotation, which you can integrate rot rotated variables, but lambda, uh, and, th and then get joint distribution. From uh, here, you don't have explicit group invariance, but you have hidden group uh, invariance because you have an integral of motion which did not change eigenvalue of lambda is, is a spectrum deformation. And so you get by free uh, expression for this uh, joint distribution. So if you do it for something even more simple than before, I don't have time to discuss, uh, let's consider even more simple metrics. So you have here random variables, and here you have k minus r. Uh, without modulus, but with E. And you compute eigen's distribution of P of S of this guy. From this distribution, like for the Wigner surmise, you can convince yourself that the good Wigner type ansatz is a exponentially strong level repulsion. B over S squared minus some quantity S. So you have, for example, it's a alpha G equal 2. It's a disk of, you have exponentially big level repulsion, and then you see how good is it fitting for this model. And this is a, a difference, so on and so forth. You can do it for all uh, Calogero Moser model, and you get a nice formula for all Calogero Moser model. And uh, the most important to me is that this strange looking model, it's called Ruysenar Schneider model. It's a, it has a name of relativistic generalization of Calogero, and never mind, it's integrable model, and the lux matrices, after big simplification, reduce exactly to the matrix which I have used for this uh, interval exchange map. But parameter R here is uh, arbitrary. It's uh, related with uh, parameter R, which is here, and so on. I used it before when R was equal alpha n. Now I can use it as a equal constant because I know how to compute it because I know spectral distribution for UCNR matrices exactly. And uh, this is uh, some picture for hyperbolic models. I, I, I don't have the time to, to discuss it. But uh, uh, for example, for this model, for UCNR matrices, so it's exactly the same matrix, but now there is no N here. And then you can check that Spectral statistics de depends of integer part of n. For a between 0 and 1, spectral statistics is shifted Poisson. So you don't have any eigenvalues in P of s before s is equal a. 
you have a gap is Angibilis. You have ex uh, a very strong label. It's, it's not even strong. It's extremely strong rival repulsion. And uh, compressibility is also an analytical formula for this case. You can compute for some other values. You can compute, in principle, for all necessary function. And you can easily check, for example, here A equals one half. And you see there is no eigenvalues here, and then exponential tail. And everything for A equals four, three. This was a curve which I showed you before, and so on and so forth. I will just two words that all these models are uh, fractal. You compute, uh, you compute fractal dimension and you see nice fractal formula. And all of them are symmetric. So symmetry, symmetry relation of Merlin uh, is working here. And uh, you can compute perturbation theory for all these models uh, which I have in mind, and they agree or very close to the model of critical random matrix ensemble. You can even compute a perturbation theory for Q less than one half, which usually you don't need. You, you cannot for a normal model, but here you can compute and you see that in the leading orders, this is a just a formula. And uh, if you look for the, for the formula which I showed you before, one, I, I started slightly before. So you see, you will see that in all limit for small and large coupling constants, there is a, this type of relation, that k equal 1 minus d1. And d1 is a just entropy of the function. It's just one of the fractal dimensions related with the entropy. But it's valid for small and large coupling constant, but what is it in between? If you do numerics, even for critical bended random matrices, you see one of them are key, and one of them is 1 over d. And the point looking as a point, for beta equal 1, for beta equal 2, uh, here they are should coincide, but they are very nicely coincide in between. For a Schneider ensemble, one can compute uh, compressibility, as, as I told you exactly. And this is a compressibility in 1 minus d1, which I compute numerically. And you see that its points are on the point. There is another model, which are called ultrametric matrices. Once more, this is a relation. It's some kind of mystical relation. It's, it's valid only for the model, which, uh, uh, which decays 1 minus as a first power. Uh, from diagonals, and also it's related. So in all possible cases which you have checked, even for the cases where you don't have uh, symmetry relation, this conjecture works perfectly well. So this is all what I would like to speak. So first of all, there are standard models. There are models which uh, leads to intermediate statistics of eigenvalue. What it is, uh, Anderson model and metal isolated transition, it was probably the first one where numerics have been performed. It's pseudo integrable billiard. For all of them, you do have pseudo uh, intermediate statistics. You can integrable billiard with a flux line, probably many of them. Uh, what is a, a critical band and trend of matrix? It has one large diagonal plus E minus G uh, uh, fall off. Pseudo integrable models by definition require more than one large diagonal or just shifted diagonals plus fall off. A small changes of matrices, I did not show you numerics, but you can see analytically and uh, uh, numerically that small changes, you think that it's small, but it leads to big changes in spectral statistics because here is everything is one over n quark. When you have changes one in the scale 1 over n, you can change everything for the spectral statistics. There is no universality. You see that very strange models appear, but this is exact. And also interesting fact that lux matrices of all integrable classical systems give new soluble ensemble. Soluble means that I can write joint distribution of eigenvalues, not for not for all of them I can compute correlation function. For Rusinar Schneider, I I do can, I can, but for all, for say, uh, Calogero model, I cannot, but you can have very nice Wigner type ansatz which agree very well with numerics. For all models which I know, I, I can functions are multifractal. Uh, there is no practically proof 
from any numerical. There is no, I don't know any one model one can compute spectrum of fractal dimension analytically. And so you use, it's mostly use perturbation theory and numerics. There is a symmetry relation. It's, for, it's valid for models with one large diagonal, but it's rule out at least numerically for the models with pseudo-integrable maps. We put conjecture, which we cannot ni prove ni disprove, that k equals 1 minus d1 divided by a dimension of the system. And you can imagine that it leads for some statistics, some new developments of intermediate statistics. It may be some new models, physical models, more physical models will do have this statistic. Thank you very much.